Hi guys, welcome to today's session, the six section blow dry. I'm going to be taking you through a really great, very easy commercial blow dry technique that creates a bouncy blow dry using a pin curling technique that is time bound, it takes around about 30 minutes to complete in total in the salon environment. It gives you a beautiful light movement and bounce to the hair. It will also provide a lot of shine and give the client a lot of longevity from the actual finish that we're going to create. I've already prepped my block through here. You can see I've taken the six sections which I'm going to be demonstrating and showing you how they work in just a few moments. The hair naturally in a salon situation with a real client would be shampooed, conditioned or treated as appropriately with the correct shampoos and conditioners as according to what you're using in a salon. We would then work with a styling product. Today I have chosen Total Body by Sexy Hair, one of the products we stock in our academy, I really love this product. It gives a lot of oomph, a lot of body, but it actually doesn't weigh the hair down, as well as helping you to smooth out my cuticle. I've blast dried the hair, actually. I worked with just a rough drying technique to take away the excess moisture from the hair, and I've actually now sectioned through. So I've got my six sections, and I'm gonna explain them to you now. Um, it's three sections at the front, three sections at the back, I'll start by showing you the sections at the back to begin with because I think that will help. The sections are taken uh, horizontally across the entire of the back of the head. So there's the first section which is here, just at the low crown. The second section was the mid band, just around about occipital. And then your third section is the nape. These are the three sections you would take in the back. And then the three sections in the front, I'm going to show you, Ooh, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> A little bit of manoeuvring there. Three sections in the front is a central section in the top here, going directly from the top of the centre forehead through to the low crown. And then we've got two sections either side as well. This will create a no parting lock. So this is perfect for those clients that I, I tend to call them flippers. They flip from one side to the other, so they'll flip it that way or they'll flip it this way. They tend not to typically wear a specific parting. You could actually blow dry this for a parting if you chose to as well. So just to repeat, we've got the six sections. You can actually see that top section more clearly. So one, two, and three. This section goes to low crown at the back. Low crown, you can see here. And then four, five, and six. These are the sections that we'll be taking. The hair is dried a tiny little bit too much because I blast dried this shortly earlier. So I'm actually just going to just wet it back down slightly. I don't want it to be too dry because we do have to transform the shape when we're actually working with a blow dry technique. We're not working with natural drying techniques. I'm just going to make sure that all the sections are nicely clipped out of the way before we start and that everything's going to be nice and easy for me to work on. I love a pre-sectioned blow dry. I love to pre-section hair. I find that when I just take those few moments just to pre-section a blow dry, I now can work from start to finish in a very fluid motion. So I know where I'm going. I know what I'm doing. I know how this blow dry is gonna pan out because I've already designed it in terms of its sectioning pattern. And as we can see, now what I'm gonna do with the six sections is I'm going to subdivide them as appropriate. Now for hair very fine, you will take less sections. For hair that's thicker and more textured, we've got more dense texture, slightly maybe more rough in texture and we're looking at smoothing, We'll take smaller sections. So for example, this first section at the name, I'm going to do it in two. So it'll be one and two. The section above it, I'm going to subdivide into three. One, two, three. Which will work in a brick-like pattern, which will mean I'll get no strips and no partings coming down any of, the, any of the back. The top section, two to three sections. The side sections, two. The top, three as well. So I know we call this a six-section blow dry, and it's predominant its primary sections are six, and then you subdivide as appropriate. So they're the subdivisions that I'm gonna to take today. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the tools that I'm gonna be working with today. I've got my dryer and my brush. I'm using a bristle brush today. This is a Label M bristle brush. I've, been, I've had this one for a number of years now. I love it, the handle's nice and comfortable. Uh, it's a ball bristle with nylon. So it's a mix. These two together help prevent static and they also give me a much smoother finish. The difference between a bristle brush and a metal brush. Um, a metal brush will actually give you a lot more heat, whereas a bristle brush will give you a lot more tension. 
I'm using the tension to create the shine and the movement. I find that this is less damaging to the hair. The technique that you actually use is slightly different. It's a lot more wrapping. You work in smaller sections on smaller parts of the hair and you wrap a little bit, wrap a little bit. Whereas with a metal brush, I'll actually show you just before we start. So uh, this would be the section. So naturally you would comb it through, points through to the roots, as shown. I would take this section and then I would start by drying the root area. Now this, set, this brush gives you a lot of tension. So it's, I'm not, I can't pull it through all the way through without causing a lot of tension to the hair, which could be dis quite be uncomfortable for the client. So when working with a bristle brush, we work in smaller sections. So I dry this bit and then I'd re-wrap it again. And then I dry them and then I re-wrap it again. And then when I get to the end, that's when I roll in. What we tend to do with a metal brush, I'm just going to quickly grab one. I have got them. I do use them now and again. I use them more for, um, what do I use them for? I use them for my twisty boho blow dries. Um, I find they really good. So this is a metal brush. These are more commonly used. Um, so when we actually wrap this one through, you'll find it will work through the hair much easier. It will actually go from root to point. The only thing is, these are a lot more damaging to hair. Um, the ball bristle and the nylon working together actually um, don't cause hardly any damage when detangling. What this will do, the metal brushes, is because the application of heat is much stronger, it will cause more heat damage over time. So this is why I do typically tend to work with bristle brushes as well, but I want to just explain the difference. And I personally believe it's nice to have a mix of both. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my section, my actual blow dry technique before I actually turn the dryer on, because it's a little bit difficult to hear me whilst, whilst it's blasting away. Um, actually, just before we go any further, if you could just pop me a thumbs up on the comments that you can hear and see me clearly, that the feed's coming through. All right, I know it gets a bit dodgy now and again, because this is Instagram Live. Um, I'll try, I'm hoping that we've got a good, a good, uh, good feed for you today. I'm going to work with a brushing technique. So my dryer and my brush um, are actually going to, and my brush, sorry, is going to just smooth the hair through. This is really important. Oh, thanks guys. Thanks for the feedback. It's good feed. Good. I'm just really brushing this hair through. Can you see? I'm actually, I'm spending some time because I need to make sure that all the points are in the same angle. So then when I apply the heat, I'm actually smoothing the cuticle. I'm actually creating a very volume light blow dry today. It's got a lot of volume in here. But first and foremost, I need to smooth the cuticle because I want to create shine. Just a smooth cuticle does not mean flat hair. It means that we're going to create shine, but then the actual movement of the brush will then create the bounce and the flex. So I'm going to work through and I'm going to start by drying through the root area first. Working through, as shown, again, smoothing those cuticles down, making sure brush and dryer don't touch. And then when I get to the end, that's when I start to wrap. Now, by wrapping the hair around the back of the brush, the underneath, I, I, I create a lot more tension, as well, you can see. Now, I'm not getting any resistance because she's a blockhead, so um, she's going to pull away. But your clients will give some resistance, and this is, this is key. You need to actually also ask the clients if they are comfortable during the blow-dry process. Because some clients are more sensitive than others, so you need to make sure that they are comfortable. Then I would start to work through, you can see my brush here, it's actually then working um, with the dryer to create the smoothness. I then work onto the ends, I'll probably start elevating the hair a little bit higher at this point. You can see I would be working through, and again, what my hand is doing is this. All the time it's working through like this, so finger and thumb are turning the brush. So you've got to have that really nice rotation on your brush as well, and that's something you can practice at home. I would then be working this section through and working it through and working it through and winding it down until I felt that all the hair from point to root is actually evenly heated and evenly brushed. And that's what we're looking for. The perfect harmony of the hair's all brushed into one point and it's been all heated at the same temperature and then it's been wrapped all in the same way. This will give you that perfect bounce that we're actually looking for. I would then set the hair into position so you would then, once wound in, set it into position. This is when I would place my dryer into my trolley. We never put our dryers under our arms or under our legs as well. It is against practice. If you was to do that under an assessment practice or during an EPA, you would actually fail that assessment as well. So that's important to know. It must go in your trolley or on T-station as well. So now that the hands are away, 
I've got all my clips. Now, many of you will know I wear a tool belt. Um, you can see it kind of there, <laughs> sort of jumping up as well, because I like to have like 25,000 clips. I always find it's really great to wear a tool belt when I'm blow drying because I've got mini clips and I know exactly where they are and I can just quickly grab one, make that pin curl and then I can start moving on to the next section. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this section and then I'm going to show you the pin curling technique. Okay, so full heat, full speed. If you're not confident when you first start drying, use medium heat just because you need to make sure that you don't burn the client. So when I was practicing, I always worked on medium heat until I actually found the confidence to start working up to high heat because I knew that I wasn't pushing too much towards there, I was working down towards the root area. And I'd always ask the client if they were happy with the tension and also the heat drying process as well. Okay, so I'm going to dry this first section. Okay, so I'm confident now that we've created enough heat and enough brushing action. Note that when working with bristles, there's a lot more brushing involved because it's about getting the hair smooth to then apply the heat. The um, metal brushes do a lot of that work for you, but again, more heat damage is caused during that process. So again, if you wanted, you could just quickly just rebrush that and then just wind it down. I tend to hold that section there when I get my clip ready. And sometimes what I'll actually do is I'll just pop the clip just in the section above it here. I'm just holding it there. So then when I, when I put my brush down, you can see already what's happening is, we can see that this is the hair that's already been curled. And that's, if you were to let it go, that's the shape we've created as well. So I'm not going, this isn't a curly blow. This is more like what I call a bouncy blow. It actually just gives you that bounce. It doesn't actually give you curls. It's a slightly different technique. I am actually teaching that tomorrow under boho blow drying as well. So what I would do here is I then go right in at the roots. Now, when we wrap a um, mannequin, you never get a fully smooth texture because there's a lot of shorter hairs in it as well. So you need to be mindful of that. You won't always necessarily get the smoothest effect. So what I'm going to do here, and you do this quite quickly, you'll see me do it in real time in just a few sections from now. So you would take this section and place two fingers underneath at the roots. Now, depending on how much lift you actually want, it's dependent on how high the section will be. So if you want more lift, you will lift it higher. If you want less lift, you will lift it lower as well. So as you can see, so I'm going to go quite high because I want to, I want to create quite a bit of bounce, quite a bit of lift. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap one rotation and then I let go. The reason why I let go is because if I don't and I keep winding and winding and winding, I twist every time I wrap and that will create a wave, not a bounce. That's a different kind of blow dryer. You can wrap and twist, wrap and twist, and it creates this, or wrap, let go, hold again, wrap, let go, hold again, and that creates this. So it's slightly different kind of techniques. Then what you want to do is just let go, take your fingers out, and then this is your section for pinning as well. You can see here that we've created that lovely pin curl. I was actually searching for my clip then. I've got my clip here, and I always point the ends of the clip away from the next section that I'm working on. So I'm work, about to work on this section here, so the, the points of the clip face the other way. If they face inwards, it may catch. So that's the first pin curl. That's the first pin curl that we've created. And again, this is a bouncy blow dry technique, not necessarily a curly blow dry, and I quite strongly do feel they are two very different blow dries. And so this is gonna give you that lift and bounce. This is very Kate Middleton. This is that kept the Prince, the Duchess of Cornwall kind of look. You know, that loose, big, quite a bit of volume, but not too much, tasteful. And then this smooth, and then it'll do different movements on the ends. It won't necessarily all go in one direction, but that has been the trend for a number of years now. I'm gonna do another section.
Okay, and we now pin exactly the same way as before. So again, you can hold it down, wind it back in. Just hold it there, and it's setting all this time whilst it's doing that. I'm just popping my clip there, that's going to be my, my pinning clip as well. And now I'll take my brush away, and I can now start to wrap. Any hair that falls away underneath those little hairs, just bring them in. So just bring them in, be quite tight at the root, because that'll help smooth any hairs that have fallen out of the blow dry um, brush, because they're shorter as well. I'm just working through, I'm taking my clip, and again, the pin curl is done the same way. Sometimes I just like to make sure they're all nice and neat as well. And I'm just always using my mirror. And then, yeah, that's our first two sections there as well. I'm not the neatest pin curler in the world, I'll admit that, actually. I find some people I get really jealous of because they've got these beautifully smooth pin curls. And, yeah, the smoother the pin curl, the better the result. But ultimately, you can over manipulate and overplay with the hair. If you kept taking it out and doing it again and again and again, you're causing static. You're causing less time for it to set in the actual curl that you actually want it to. So ultimately, you've got to get to a level where you believe thoroughly that what you have created will give you what you're actually looking for as well. And I, I'm very confident that I, I create that with, with my looks as well. I've got my next section here as well. So we, what we're doing now is we're moving through. So we've got section number two as well. And now I'm doing this section into three because it's slightly bigger as well. This will also help me work in like a brick-like pattern, which stops us from getting any lines down the back of the head as well. So you can see that one bounces slightly over this next section. So they actually work in a brick-like pattern as well and then work through exactly the same. I'm gonna do a little bit more of a lifting technique as I work through. I tend not to lift the bottom ones too much because I want these ones to trail down so it still feels long. But as I get higher up, I start lifting much higher as well. I'll also perform a technique where I actually go underneath. So I actually go underneath the section. Now, please note that you do not touch the root area. It is around about this spacing that you will need. And you actually just work up. It's to help push the hair. It will also help smooth the underneath of this section. up if you like while you just get your clip ready for your next section next pin curl and then wind so you spend a little bit more time with the bristle brushes I find than maybe with a metal brush but I I have to be honest I having worked extensively with both I do find that this technique is better there's a little section now I just need to remove with this brush, but it's each to their own. You've got to use what works for you as well, because that's fundamentally, it's your career and it's your clients. And you've got to do it. I always find it's best not. Find your own way. There we go. Let's say that's the next section there. It's so interesting, as I'm actually blow drying, there's a lampshade directly above where you are and it's like frantically moving. <laughs> and I keep catching it out of the corner of my head. I think, I really hope that's not gonna fall on me. It's because the hairdryer is blowing it. Okay. Teaching from home has been an experience. I'm working through on the next sections as well. And I do take my time with sectioning because I find that this gives me, it actually in turn actually makes me work quicker as well. So you can see I'm now working over the central back section.
Once you feel happy, then begin to perform your wrap. And then always pin going away from your next section. So pin this way because I've got to work that next section next to it. And if I pin the other way, this, it'll catch this when I'm actually blow drying as well. So you need to just really make sure that your sections are totally accurate. Particularly when you're training. Any questions, feel free to ask. I'm going to carry on, guys, because uh, I want to show you how quick and easy this is. into place. If you just wanted to set it, pin clips ready, I'm just going to pop that in there, brush once more, and then start your pin. And remember, as I wrap each rotation, I let go, because it'll help the hair just... You'll find, actually, when you come to do your pin curl, the hair will just fall to where you want it to be as well. You'll also see that there's some flyaway hairs. You do get these on mannequins. They're pretty much unavoidable. Um, this hair quality is basically, um, mannequin hair is basically extension hair that wasn't the quality um, enough to be used for hair extensions. So you do find that there's always slight compromises to make when you're practicing on a mannequin as well. So don't get too disheartened if you don't get that super smooth look that maybe you're getting on a, a client as well because it's a different quality of hair. I'm going to actually work slightly more higher now i'm actually going to really create some volume in these top sections here and i'm spending a lot of time brushing the hair because i'm working with a bristle brush still warm at this point because I've obviously just heated it so that's why I like to just go back in and do a rewind I just rewind it just while I get my clip ready just because I find that I can just get that little bit of extra setting time of it before I begin to pin because there's no heat once um once we've pinned it because the heat's from the dryer and the brush and as I'm not working with a metal brush I can't, I'm, I'm dependent on the smoothness of the technique. You can see this one's a little bit higher in elevation. I've, I've really elevated that one high. That's going to give me a lot more lift. As it's quite a larger section as well, I'm going to work with two pins because I've got to blow dry these ones here and I don't want this to get pulled out of the way. So these two pins working together on these sides will stop these sections getting 
pulled out during the blow-dry process. Okay, I'm going to move on, actually. I'm going to do these next two sections a little bit quicker as well. And you can see we're almost completed the bath. It's a really great time-bound blow-dry as well. You're looking, this will be a 45-minute, 30 to 45-minute appointment as well. And you want to try and get your pinkles to be the same size. That can't be difficult because you're wrapping with your fingers and you end up with slightly differences in them. But the dressing out process is very crucial in this final look anyway. So you've got opportunities to add that extra, extra element when you, when, you, um, when you dress, when you dress it out. And tight at the root area as well that's going to give you that lift as well and we do have to do this as quickly as we can because it's setting all the while it's cooling and again I'll be putting two probably on this section is that sometimes you'll get the odd pink colors a little bit more delicate than the others I always like to put an extra clip in move through to the side we're dividing the, uh, so that's one, two, three, we're on section number four. I'm dividing this into two. I'm going to take this right over to the other side. There we go, so here we are. Here's that next section. It has almost dried. That's just because it's a blockhead. I'm just going to go through, because uh, I've created a bit of a kink at the root here as well, my sectioning clip. So I, I'm just going to quickly dampen that one back down as well and we work the same motion it's just going straight up now dependent on the direction of hair is dependent on how you would actually wind these you can actually wind these sections back so i could actually wrap them this way like that so the brush is on the vertical and the curl will go back if you wanted more of a curled look this is more bouncy so when i always work on bounce looks if someone wants a bouncy look it's always on the horizontal to the section so I'll always work horizontal to that section as well. So that gives me the more bounce look. If I want more curls, then I tend to go in as a, a, a diagonal because then that'll give me that curlier look as well. I'm gonna go through the section.
wash it down quick. fingers <laughs> so um, it took me a bit of time to learn how to withdraw my fingers out of the clip so you may find the same as well so um, you know it's just about practicing each individual element of this technique I find this section's a little bit more damper I feel confident I could get a blow dry out of that Okay, carry on. Any questions feel free to ask. If you do ask a question I will be reading it out as some people may be watching this at a later date and also on our YouTube channel and they will not be able to see the live comments so if you do pop a question on I will read it out for any possible future audience members <laughs> to see what we're talking about. Just Got those two sections there. I'm going to do exactly the same on the opposite side. I'm going to work really super quick through this next side now, just so we can get to the top. And then I'll show you the dressing. What time are we on? 43. So I started right. I want to dress. Um, there's an extra session today after this one Hollywood Ways using a tongue technique. I uh, hope you guys can join. That would be really cool if you can. But you can also catch it at any time. Okay. <laughs> going through quite quickly now just so we can reach the top sections because I've already prepared one um, earlier because it's it's vitally important in order to get the most out of the pink curl blow dry that the hair's allowed to fully cool until it's completely cold. This would take up to about 20 minutes realistically so we wouldn't have time unless we just maybe sat and chatted for a while. I think the live would run out uh, so I wanted to really go through and create one for you that I could confidently dress out and get the maximum effect because I really want to show you the true beauty of this blow dry. It's going to work through now.
slightly. There we go. Sometimes if you do do that, just check. I just caught the back pinkle slightly as I was wrapping. Just make sure that you've not disturbed any of your work. And if you have, you can always go in and do a quick rewrap. Sometimes these sections can overlap. Especially on very dense hair. I'm working through the top section now, this central profile section. I'm going from the back. These will give you the, the main height. So this is like the main part of the show as well. Feel free to wet this back down uh, because naturally we want to change the shape from wet to dry as that's when we'll get the full effect. For the purposes of today's demonstration, I am going to continue with the hair at this dampness because I want to try and work through these sections quite quickly. I feel that we've understood the technique, but I wanted to show you the top section because it's quite important. I would make sure that my seat was lowered as much as possibly can because I'm going to work quite high. So the lady's quite, quite low down in the seat now, which is why hydraulic chairs are... Well, wow, they were invented basically so we can actually work, work better as well. Sections are a bit larger in the top as well, so you do have to do a little bit more brushing. And I'll typically tend to do this in about three sections as well. So again, all I'm going to do is just wind this down once more, just whilst I get my clip ready. Again, the sections are a little bit bigger in the top because we want this to work really cleanly into one. And again, I'm just going to really tuck this in nice and neat. Use two clips if you need to at either side. I'm just going to carry on. I'm going to try and do this in, I'm going to be cheeky and try and do this in three sections. It's quite, quite a thick hair actually at the top as well, so it's a little bit more true to life. Hope you guys can see. I'm just going to carry on with these sections now. What time are we on? So we've got another 20 minutes around about. No, I think we've actually got a bit more than that maybe. Well, let's keep going. <laughs> Always feel so weird without any music on because we're so used to it in salons, aren't we? I always feel like, why is it so quiet? And again, I'm ready to wrap the section up. I'm going to take this down, and this is going to give me that this beautiful loose bounce that I'm after. I probably definitely would to work two section of clips into that final section there. Final section now. 
Okay, I'm just going to work slight, as quick as I possibly can, because I've already got one pre-prepared, you see. Again, just working through. Exactly the same as before. I'm obviously, I'm going to naturally work on smoothing the hairline. I do need to be really cautious when working around the hairline. The hair is one, very sensitive, and two, be working towards the face. So just be mindful of the direction of the heat and how close you're going to the scalp area. I always work quite far away. And this is why I like to work with bristle brushes because it's not necessarily actually all about the heat. It's actually about the brush in this instance. This is why I prefer a bristle. I'll show you that it's been created. I'm just going to smooth that just a little bit more, just while I prepare my clip, find one. I've got no way to pin it on the head now, actually, without because I'm on my last section. So I'm going to I'm going to keep it there, actually, where I found it, where I had it. Here we go. We've got that lovely. You can already see that curl coming through. It's nice, isn't it? You know. We've got that, it's more of a bounce than, well, it's more of a bounce than a curl. Because we don't, this isn't really a curly look. And I'm just going to spend a little bit of time really carefully wrapping, wrapping, wrapping <laughs> this one up. I would work some hairspray. Now, I'd be looking to cool this a minimum 15 minutes. But even then, that's going to be quite... You can see I've worked with a really big pink curl, so this is going to just give me bounce. This isn't going to give me like really curly hair, it's just going to give me that really gentle bounce through here as well. I'm just going to show you how that actually looks through here as well. You can see there is a lot of hairs that sort of come out. You do get this sometimes, even on a human. Don't worry too much about these, we can dress those at the end, but you'll definitely get them on a mannequin because, again, of the quality of the hair we're working with. I'd be very happy with that if I was actually working on a human. Okay, right, so here's one I made earlier. It's gonna, oh, she's quite stuck. There we go, I'm just gonna take her away. I'm just gonna now bring back the one that I made earlier. This is one I made earlier. As you can see, this is a different block. A little bit higher on the crown, I've actually gone with. Exactly the same technique as before. But this was done about two hours ago. Now, we, I used to offer a service where clients could have the pink oak lips replaced with pins and leave with their hair in this fashion. They would then take the pins out themselves and then dress the hair and I would give them instructions. It gives me a, the chance the hair, the, the hair to become fully cold. Once the hair is fully cold and I'm, when it's actually touched, when you can touch it, you can actually feel a coolness to it. It feels cooler than the environment that you're in that's when you know that the hair is truly set even if it's the same temperature as your body it feels like oh yeah i can feel a little bit of warmth it's still molding what we tend to do a lot of the time wrong well not wrong but we're working to a, a time restrictions in salon is we may take them out a little bit too soon so I would say to my client, where are you going? What time are you going? What are you doing? What's your activity? If they really need it to last as long as they possibly can, I'm going to say to them, I would like to keep this in for a further 20 minutes. And we may have to negotiate, but if the lady, for example, 
says, I actually need to leave much sooner than that, can we take the mouse straight away? I would explain that you may not get the longevity of, say, if we allowed it to fully cool. I did work a little bit of the Velvet Silk Care Spray before as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to remove the pins and you'll see the bounce that we've created. So I'm just going to take the pins and you can already see it's just more like this really rather than a real curl. But what you're going to get, you're going to get sort of like, it's going to be very va va -voom, really as well. That's what we're actually looking for. Very gorgeous, luscious sort of hair as well. And I love the interesting waves that you actually get. It's not necessarily a wave and it's not necessarily a curl. It's something of its own nature, its own design really. It gives you more sort of, and then you'll get a wave and then you'll get a curl and a bend. I find that's why I feel clients, I find that's why it's so popular because it actually mimics natural bouncy hair. It's not like a specific curl technique. And you'll find on a block we'll get ma mass volume because I've actually allowed it to fully cool but you would also find that on a, on, a, on a human as well. So that's the back sections now taken out. You can see that's giving me that real bounce. I'm now going to take these side sections away as well. If you find a section gets caught, don't worry. We can always just re-manipulate that back into place because the section clip caught the hair and it pulls it out of the, out of the form it's in a little bit. As well, that's a, that's a really nice example of the shape that the pink or blood dry can give you. As well. These are lovely. And then what I would usually do, it was I'd ask the lady to tilt her head back and then I'd remove the um, top ones. But I'm actually, wearing, I'm using a towel you see on the top of my uh, tripod today. And this is actually really good for blocks that don't necessarily fit onto that tripod. Cause, and also if you're using a lot of tension. <laughs> like I am doing today. I'm just taking these ones out. So imagine the client's head slightly tilted back now. I'm trying to avoid disturbing the pink holes at this stage of the technique. And I allow these to fall back as shown. Now what we'll find is we've got a lot of sectioning marks. You can sort of see through here and through here. So we need to massage them out. So I'm going to place it back onto the clamp and I'm going to actually just work with a, almost like a shampoo-like technique and I'm just going to gently massage the roots. I would speak to my lady, if this was say 10 o'clock in the morning and she was going for dinner in the evening, I probably wouldn't dress out the ends at all. I would leave it intact the way that you see it right now and I would allow it to drop naturally but I would always massage the roots because we cannot leave the hair with sectioning marks in the root area. It's also become quite fashionable to actually wear your hair in this undressed like shape. We're seeing a lot on Instagram, but this is an undressed look. This isn't finished hair. This is almost like when you first take it out. But what we find is clients will go about their business, they go about their day, and then by the time they're going out for dinner in the evening, it's dropped to the actual style that they want it to. Lots of clients will say, oh, it's so curly at first, it's so bouncy. But you almost have to trust the process as well so that we can say that's the actual bouncy look undressed onto the ends. And that's what we've created through the top. There's no parting, as you can see, but now it can be flipped. So let's just say a client wants to maybe, and this is when they'll start to put their hands in it as well, and we'll start to manipulate. So you can see this section's gonna go over there. It's not gonna be worn to a specific parting, if I was going to dress out the ends, I would always start at the bottom. You can work with your fingers just to create a beautiful stroking motion, or you could work with a dressing brush. A dressing brush is actually going to take out most of the movement and actually leave it much softer as well. So that's usually how I would leave my clients if they were going to, say, go out for the evening. I would allow it to drop naturally as well. Ultimately, what this look is actually going to give you is a much smoother effect when you've actually worked the hair into the position, so you're gonna get more like this. That's the kind of look the bouncy blow dry is giving you. It's not necessarily curl, it's more bounce, it's more movement, really. If you want curl, that's more of a twisting motion, which then, of course, can be pinned as well, but this isn't what this blow dry is as well. So I always think there's a little bit of confusion and in terms of which blow dry is what, and, it's what's a curly blow dry and what's a bouncy blow dry and, and what's the difference between the two and 
And that's how I personally see it. I personally see it as a curly blow dryer is curl and a bouncy blow dryer is bounce. And this is bounce, it's got movement, it's got curl, it's got volume and it's going in different directions. A curly blow dry is curl and it actually gives you more of a kind of coiled black effect. But I, I prefer the bouncy, but sometimes clients will ask for something a little bit different. And I'm just going through and I'm just really manipulating the sections with my fingers, actually at this moment as well. Alternatively, I could work with a dressing brush. So I'm just going to pip up my dressing brush. I'm going to work with a bristle dressing brush, again with the nylon as well. I'm just going to work through the root area just to smooth out any unwanted sections. I then can smooth the ends as well to create more of a really what you would see on, say, the Duchess of Cornwall, sorry, the Duchess of Cambridge, that kind of more elegant look. And what's really amazing, because we've set the hair, again, like the Hollywood set, this has memory, but this is much softer. The Hollywood set has extreme bounce to it, and it... It, you have to really work it to tame it, whereas this is actually moulding into a beautiful soft shape very simply whilst maintaining its natural bounce and volume as well. I'm just sort of, I'd be using the mirror at this point for the dressing. I, I'm all about the face, it's all about the face shape. So looking to see how it's moving, how it's working. And what's really great about the bouncy blow is its versatility. It can be then flipped over to the opposite side as well. But again, you would discuss this with your client really about the dressing out. It's very, actually, I can't even remember last time I actually fully dressed out a lady, actually. I always say, let it, let it drop, let it drop, let it drop. But that's what, that's what by the evening she'd be going out with. So that, that's the bounce, really. That's on this length of hair. The longer it gets, the more curls you get as well because they start to sort of actually work through but that's the actual bounce and what's really cool about this blow dryer is that when you actually walk that's exactly what it does it will actually bounce and and that's what gives it that uber glamorous feeling and then it can be reworked as well so you can you can rework it to the opposite side it doesn't necessarily have a parting and and this is really good for your flipper clients you know ones that flip it from one side to the other to get that 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 bounce that movement i've seen i see clients you know they've always got their hands in the hair it's not great for a blow dryer, to be honest, to always have your hands in your hair because you're transferring oils from the skin into, into it. So if a client, again, when it comes to longevity, you've got to talk to them about all these different things. Do you put your hands in your hair? Are you actually, well, I actually really like, I prefer it that side. Um, do you put your hands in your hair? Are you doing different things with it? And if they say, well, yeah, I like to run my hands through it. Well, you know, the more you run your hands through it, he says, as he's running his hands through it, <laughs> the less light the blow dry is going to last as well. So again, these are all considerations that we would make when dressing out. Okay, so that's our bouncy blow dry look. Six section blow dry using a bouncy look as well. I'd really love to show you this on an actual human after lockdown as well, because you get, because the ends, I did, um, I cut this actually earlier um, as part of my prep today because our ends were really scraggy. It's still really probably too long, but I didn't want to cut it any shorter because I, I didn't feel we were going to get sort of the, the, uh, the magic really in terms of this look. Okay guys, I'm going to sign off for now. Uh, it was absolutely a pleasure to teach you once again. I'm going to be back on very shortly in around about 10 to 15 minutes time. It's going to have a little break uh, because I'm going to show you the Hollywood wave. I'm actually putting in a little extra session today um, just to show you my Hollywood wave technique, my, my all-time favourite technique working with a curling tongue as well. We're going to create that really super crested light wave. It will hopefully get uploaded to Instagram TV and also our YouTube channels as well. So if you can't watch it later, you might be having your dinner or you might be going somewhere. Um, you can feel, you can catch me at, en at, any, at, a, at any time as well. And I hope you've got, I hope you got something out of this session as well. I find this is a really, it's still a strong commercial look. A lot of clients, oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. A lot of clients still want this effect and I find that this is one of the best ways to actually create that. Okay guys, and uh, look forward to seeing you tomorrow as well. I'm teaching a little bit later, about 15-20 minutes time. 
And to see you tomorrow as well for Boho Blow Dry. Boho Blow Dry, the, be the beach wave using a dryer and a brush. Again, same time, 4 o'clock. Okay, I'll see you soon. Very soon, actually. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.